Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. And today we are actually going to look at our upcoming political season. I mean, we're right now in the beginning of the state legislature. We are um, in the beginning of the 2000, well, 2022 uh, election season, and we were blessed. We were blessed this weekend with a few polls from our star advertiser. Now, I, I, I have to say that they don't always get things right, but they love doing whatever it is that they do, going out there and uh, taking polls of how, what people think and so forth. And the interesting thing about all of this is I have as our guest today, Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii. And uh, as the those of you who have watched uh, my show before, you, you know that he's been a regular guest and, and he's one of these guys who uh, can like, you know, throw the bones out there and see the future and the political events and the rest of it. So that we have with us again, the Director of Public Policy at the University of Hawaii. Welcome, Colin. Thank you so much for agreeing to join us. This Pleasure time. to be here. It's always fun to talk about polls. <laughs> well, you know, and that, that's the whole purpose of this. And, and so I have it. Um, I just happened to have the uh, Star Advertiser for this past uh, Sunday or yesterday. And the headlines were that the poll was about the various candidates uh, in, in the race. And, and, and just, um, well, let me just, before I get too straight, what was your impression of all of this? Uh, what does the polls tell us? Well, the the, 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 the clearest result is that Josh Green is the candidate to win, uh, or the candidate to beat, I, I should say. Um, or the candidate to lose, if you- Or the uh, candidate uh, to lose, I should say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, with 58% of people saying that if the Democratic primary were held today, and again, this was a poll of likely Democratic voters, they'd vote for Josh Green. So that- that's a pretty extraordinary result, I think, at this stage in the campaign. Um, and uh, what did what did the um, what did Kurt Caldwell and uh, and Vicky have? I, I think so. Caldwell 10. was at eleven, and Cayetano, Vicky Cayetano, was at eight. So, and there there's twenty three percent of voters said they were they were undecided. So it's a pretty big gap. I mean, you're talking about an enormous gap between Green and his closest competitor. And you know, really, Caldwell and Cayetano are, are within the margin of error. So it's hard to say who's, uh, you know, who's in second and who's in third there. What's I don't know about you. thing about that to me was that uh, Vicky uh, actually pulled about the same as Kurt. And Kurt's been around a long time. Exactly. I mean, and, and so here's how I look at this, which is that if you're Kirk Caldwell, this is really bad news. Voters already know who you are. You're not trying to establish name recognition um, and you're down at 11%. If you're Vicky Cayetano, there's room to grow. Now, only 23% of people are undecided. Of course, you know some voters who say they're voting for Green could move, but a lot of them don't know who Vicky Cayetano is. They might remember she was first lady, but for a candidate like her, there, there's room to gain to grow your base. I think it's it's much harder if you're a well-known figure uh, to persuade people who know you and aren't supporting you to come back into your camp. I think I don't know how you feel about that. Well, I, I tell you, uh, I actually experienced that uh, when I ran. That's for, true. Uh, That's true. You know better than anybody. For, <laughs> when I ran for governor in the Democratic primary, I mean the the numbers were very similar. To what you see out there uh, for um, uh, for Josh Green and for Vicky, um, and nobody knew who I was. But as you know, the the advertiser was wrong. And, and you know, one of the curious things, which I didn't, I haven't checked, but I've been thinking. I wonder how many times the advertiser was right with their point, where they actually <laughs> called the real winner. Do you remember if? When Ige challenged Abercrombie, I'm not sure what that poll looked like. I That's am almost question. certain Ige was uh, behind Abercrombie. Yeah, yeah. The, the first time, you know, and, and uh, yeah. And so, that, you know, this doesn't tell us anything except 
where it was the day that they took the poll, but still, sure. still, I, I am um, really surprised that uh, uh, Josh is doing as well as he's doing. Um, you know, but I think the pandemic really helped him, don't you? It, it absolutely did. And this poll shows this a little bit. Um, as I recall, the, uh, you know, his approval rating for handling the pandemic was, was even higher than his general approval rating. And, and, and this is sort of unique, I think, to Hawaii, because you could imagine on the mainland, there are people yeah. who really were associated with the COVID response who've been punished for that. Um, but here it, it's helped. I think it even helped Governor Ige a little bit. Um, if you look well, at it, made him look rate. better, don't you yeah. think so? Because yeah. part of the polls, in fact, that's what we're going to get on, is the fact that uh, the polls also had some numbers for uh, Governor Ige and for Mayor Blangiati. And it seemed like um, they seem to have done, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't understand the uh, Blangiati poll, actually, to be real one, because usually there's a kind of a, um, what do you call it, uh, like a honeymoon? Yeah, I agree with you. I was surprised his numbers were low. Um, I mean, there's still people who don't who don't recognize him higher than some of the other um, figures, but he's 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 right around where Governor Ige was. And, and usually um, usually you're right. You do get this honeymoon. What what I think might be going on is during a crisis like that, this who, whoever is at the top, whoever is the chief executive is being punished. I mean, there are people who think that David Ige should be less strict. There are people who think Rick Blangiardi should be more strict. And they kind of get all the blame for people who are upset with the state's COVID response. And, you know, being in the lieutenant governor's position is often kind of the sweet spot because you can take credit for things, but you're not you don't often get the blame um, when people are just thinking about the state's overall function and response. But, but once again, where's the honeymoon, you know? Yeah. Uh, what do you think's going on there? I, I, I was surprised I, too. I, I thought know. his numbers would be much better. I, I thought I thought the mayor would be much better. I think that, uh, you know, people would have said, oh, something new is happening and, and the like. And yet, I, uh, what this makes me think is, I wonder how much of Kurt's problems were not necessarily connected to his work as mayor, which people may not have been that unsatisfied with, as much as his problems with the uh, ongoing federal investigations. I, I think that's a big part of it. And the recent arrest just reminded people of that. If, if they'd forgotten, uh, if they blamed him for some of the, the Kealoha scandal, then these recent arrests um, just highlighted that back in the news and his connection uh, with the three folks who were under investigation. So I'm sure that contributed a fair bit. But even then, it still it's still remarkably low. And it may just be a combination of those two factors. He's, he's really associated with the rail. And then you have a couple of these scandals. And it, I think it's just really hard to get out from under that. You know, it's, it's sort of interesting to me because the, he, the of the uh, major uh, candidates, the, the person that is least affected by incumbency is Blangiati. And so you, you got the EK, you got... Uh, Kurt Caldwell, even to a certain extent, Vicky Caetano. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's no doubt that some people who either like or dislike her husband uh, may be playing into, into uh, people's perceptions. But nevertheless, I thought, uh, you know, that the after the last election, that uh, Blangiati would be served doing a lot better. Because he won so decisively, if you remember, I think he won in almost every district except for one or two. So it it was a it it was a decisive victory, and I thought that would carry over more. I I completely agree. Yeah, and it seemed, and, and actually, in all fairness, um, I don't think he's made a, a well. First of all, I don't think he's made necessarily a wrong decision, but he definitely hasn't made, in my opinion, an unpopular decision. I agree. I can't think, I was trying to think of that, and I can't think of anything that was really unpopular or really controversial. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, Rick's been on the right side of most issues. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Ige um, is Ige. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't think, I, I, I don't know what, in fact, I, I know that to peop, that people who credit uh, Governor Ige with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, positively, generally speak about his role in the, uh, in the pandemic. And he, he's made, it's very, very clear that Ige's priority was uh, to go along with science and, and, and help first. But I, I, you know, I, when I saw the numbers, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if there was no pandemic, if he would have had the same rating, you know? I, 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 it's just sort of a, ah, you know, this is where it is. Yeah, you know, I, he, he is doing a little bit, I mean, and as you said, I mean, the pandemic helped him and it's, he is doing a little bit better than he, the numbers actually were at before the pandemic. They were, they were a little lower than, than they are now. So I, I think that, you know, I, people, people complained a lot about the governor, but I think there's also a lot of people who were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you look at the number of people who said they were, they were neutral about the governor. I think there's a sense now that People have really piled on to Ige, and he he hasn't done that bad of a job, particularly in COVID. And so they're, um, you know, they're 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 a little less critical. Um, and I think a lot of it is about the pandemic, and you know, not some of the other more notorious problems like the you know missile missile alert uh, issue and, and things like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, well, you know, if nothing else, that got him name recognition, <laughs> <laughs> national recognition. Yeah, national recognition. I, I got to tell you though. Um, as I, as I, I wish that they had done a poll on the legislature, but people thought about the legislature during this period and during the pandemic. And because there's been a lot of reaction from the community about the, you know, the, the closeness of the legislature, the fact that, and, and there's valid health reasons for closing down the Capitol building, but uh, there's been kind of a this I don't know I sense a distance with the voters and their legislator that maybe might not have quite existed before. I mean, there was always a you know send the rascals home except my rascal, you know. Right. But uh, <laughs> but this time around, it's just sort of like indifference, you know. I, I think so too. There's not. There, I've been surprised at the lack of interest they've had to try to bring people back into the capital, even if they had to be, you know, show their vaccination card, just like you do in a restaurant. And they, even if they limited the number of people testifying, I think, don't, don't you think it creates a different dynamic? I mean, I, I would imagine I I if, you, if you don't have people sitting there right in front of you, uh, it, it's different. You're more removed. You might make different decisions. I think the problem with that, though, is that it tends to make I think an elected official feel safe, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't necessarily want to change things. You know, you don't necessarily want to have open government. It's like passing an open records law for everybody, but or, or open meeting law for everybody but yourself. No. <laughs> it, it's like, what do you do? You know. Um, well, here's the thing, though. The, the lieutenant governor's race, or except for well, there are two. Well, Keith Amimia ran before, and he seems to. Um, he was also a surprise. I, I didn't expect. You would have thought that he would have been done a little bit better. I mean, he did come very close to winning the mayor's race. Oh, not very close, but he he, he was competitive. Well, he yeah. was. He beat Colleen Hanabusa, so he was. He yeah. was in the primary. Yeah, I was surprised that that he was only at. Uh, you know, in this poll, 8%. And, you know, again, everyone's kind of clumped together because we statistically, we can't really say much, um, much of anything meaningful, but I thought he would be better. He was the last most recent person to run an island wide race. He had a lot of support, a lot of name recognition. I mean, I, I, I think it's likely that he's also being hurt by the fact that Roy Amamiya was arrested. I mean, just the fact that they share the same name, that's, it's not fair. They're different people, but I think there's, Maybe a little bit of that going on. Um, you know, Jill Takuda, of course, ran before, and she she barely lost to Josh Green last time. Um, and in this poll, she was at the top, but not 
not not as much dramatically. As yeah, yeah, no. You know, she's not. She's not. She didn't get Josh Green type numbers. No. You know, and um, well, Ikaika Anderson, I expected him to do as well as he did, which is you know around second, middle of the pack. Yeah. The interesting person to me was Sherry Minor Mekna. McNamara, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I said when I was talking to the paper. Is that if if I think if there's any candidate who would have been thrilled to get these numbers, it should be Sherry Manor McNamara because, you know, what does a poll like this do? I mean, we know they're going to change, and it's only this moment in time picture. But, well, I mean, you, you you've run before, and I'm sure you can you can you'd agree with this. Oh yeah, it gives yeah. a you know. It gives your campaign a shot in the arm. All of a sudden, donors are calling again if they, you know, now that they see you're viable. I got a couple of questions, you know, like, first of all, how does these polls affect uh, the, uh, you know, the affect politics in Hawaii and to what extent? And two, whether or not, uh, how many of these so-called Democrats are actually Republicans looking for a different alternative than the Democrats? But I think we are about ready to take a break here. So when we come back, um, think about those and we'll get right into it. And then some of the other issues that the, uh, uh, the, the Star Advertiser was bringing up. I'm Prince Dykes, the host of the Prince of Investment, the financial literacy and business show that comes to you live every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Hawaii time. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and wherever you can catch podcasts. I'll see you there. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahe and our special guest, Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii. And we are just mining his mind <laughs> on public policy. And we were talking about the question, we, which was uh, on my mind when we went into break, was what, what, how, how much do you think, or what impact do these polls uh, have on, uh, on, on politics? I mean, if I was uh, looking at running against Josh Green, what do I do now? And what does Josh Green do? You know, what's the what's the after story? You know? Sure. I mean, and I think, you know, politicians love love polls and are obsessed by polls, probably probably sometimes more than they should be. But I think that um, the, the first thing it does is if, if you're running and, you know, you're behind or you're a first time candidate, getting a decent poll is is a great advertisement to donors because for the most part, people who are going to give money in politics, they want to back a winner. I mean, or they right. want their money to mean something. And if they just think you're a hopeless case, it's going to be really hard outside your close friends yeah. for anyone to give you money. So, I mean, we'll use the example of Sherry Minora McNamara, of course, who has her own connections to the business community, but she's a first time candidate. And all of a sudden in this poll, she's at 7%, which for someone might not be good, but for someone like her, I think is a great result ahead of Sylvia Luke. And so then you can say to your donors, look, I'm a viable candidate. You can support me. I think it, it, even people who read this in the newspaper, how do they interpret it? I think that, you know, voters to some degree like to back winners too. And so, you know, they might reconsider a candidate who you know, got a pretty decent poll result. And that, you know, that has this effect of, 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 you know, in some ways, people who get good poll results, you know, it, it, there's sort of a bandwagon effect sometimes. Um, and, which and, and if you well, one thing is that I, I, when you look at the candidate, I mean, uh, she is the business person's candidate as far as the lieutenant governor's race is concerned. I don't know how much of that rubs off on Vicky, but you know, this is a s unfortunate, this is going to be like heresy, but this is unfortunately a single party state. And, and I really think that's not that's not a good thing, frankly. We, we need a uh, we need a, the loyal opposition to to challenge uh, the people that you know, in the majority. But um, I wonder how much uh, Sherry 
Minoru McNamara's uh, support, and even Vicky Caetano's, are people, are the conservative wing of the Democratic Party, which in maybe other states might have been part of the Republican Party. I think that's, I think there's a lot of that. I mean, we know that there's a, you know, even our, our party, if you look at the people who are in leadership in the legislature, for example, they're not the sort of far left wing progressives you might see in the Democratic parties in other states. I mean, and so I think there are more conservative, even voters who identify as Democrats here more than perhaps in California. Um, and, and they're looking for a candidate like Sherry Menor McNamara, Vicky Cayetano, you know, even in their in in what little campaign um, communication we've seen, you know, Sherry Menor McNamara in particular is always talking about small business, small business, small business, um, a community. Well, that's that where she comes yeah. from in the Chamber of Commerce, right? Exactly. So there's yeah, there's a constituency business, for that. I think I think their big business has, you know, always finds a way to make an alliance with the existing establishment. <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's, whether it was the radical Democrats of yesterday or today, I mean, there was a way that they all, but small business is sort of a sector out by itself and, and, and feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so they really become the mainstay of people like the Chamber of Commerce and, and, and the like. And so all politicians, give lip service to that sector like they would to any other sector but then they don't the, the, the small business people don't actually feel it you know like right really for me and, and so <laughs> forth I, I i just think that with the, the elephant in the room of course is the fact that one uh, a candidate that's been mentioned recently for governor uh, uh, hasn't even wasn't in the poll so if you were uh, Congressman Kai Kaheli looking at these polls, what what would be your analysis? I mean, what would you think about? Sure. Well, if if I were Congressman Kaheli, I would be concerned by the, what I saw from this poll with Josh Green because you might want to look at this poll and see well where where can you make inroads and you know would. Caldwell and Cayetano voters, could they be Kahele voters? I think that's, there, there are always some, but I don't think that's where he could draw a lot of support. So, um, so it might yeah. be the best thing he might be, he might be the best thing, uh, he might be most happy about the fact that he wasn't in the poll. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I'm sure he's glad because he wouldn't. I mean, if he it would it would it would end the speculation if he did real poorly. But you know, the thing that Green brings to the table that we you don't often see is see is that of course he was a a neighbor island senator too. He has a lot of support on the Big Island, a lot of support among Hawaiians. I mean, the sort the sort of groups that uh, would be core Kahele supporters. If he runs, he's going to have to fight Josh Green for for those supporters. Well, People who already say. They're green voters, and that's tough to pull off. Okay, so I'm going to move on really quickly to some of the other. There was a poll that came out today, and it showed that the, uh, at least the voters in Hawaii, um, you know, are very upset about the Red Hill and, and the like. And you got any thoughts about that uh, phenomenon? Or, I mean, well, I, I was pretty expected, wouldn't it? I that's it's what I expected. I mean, I don't think the Navy has a lot of friends um, on the island these days. Um, people are overwhelmingly in support of draining the tanks. Um, you know, it's going to be what's going to be interesting to see, I think, is how the candidates navigate this because they want to be critical about this issue. But you have to be careful when you're talking about the military in general, because we have so many people who work for the Navy, you know, so many veterans. So I think this will I think, as you said, everyone has to be for draining the tanks in this Red Hill crisis. You won't be able to get elected if you're not. But you can't be anti-military, I think, still. Or I don't know how you feel about that. Do you think this is, is this permanently damaging? Um, I, I, well, I, relationship? well, I, I think uh, that uh, uh, it's precisely what you say. I mean, you, you've got to be on the side of the, the Hawaii residents if you're going to represent Hawaii or be you know, in the office here. On the other hand, um, you got to be aware that probably Hawaii has more veterans per capita mm -hmm. than most places and, and the like. Um, but I don't think people see the same 
I, I might be wrong, but my sense is that people don't necessarily see what's happening at Red Hill as a military thing. They just kind of think of it as sloppy government. Yeah. Um, and the real critical issue is, I don't think our congressional delegation can walk a line on this issue. No. They, it's, it's over. The paper also mentioned that they would be taking other polls. So I thought it might be fun if you know we could sort of guess at some of these things. One thing, one of the things that's coming out tomorrow, and we'll see whether who's right or wrong on this, Halava Stadium. Having, I don't know what the question would be, but you know, it's going to be a question that asks people, are you in favor of, the, of a rebuilding the Halava Stadium? Uh, got any idea? Are, do you know if they're going to give them an alternative? Are they going to ask them about building up Manoa instead? I don't know. I don't know. But I, I, I'll be very curious to see whether people, there's a lot of nostalgia for Halava. Yeah. I think people are going to be for it. I really do. I, because of that reason, because of that nostalgia. It's just a nostalgia reason, yeah. And, and, and then they, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. and I was going to say, they're not really, they're probably not going to present the costs. I mean, an alternative, would you like this or would you like all of the land to go to affordable housing? Then you might get a little bit of a different response. What's the most, the last day would be important issues in Hawaii. So what do you think is the most important issue for, besides pandemic? Oh, the cost of living, housing, for sure, um, consistently. Um, and I think, I don't, I don't know what the question is going to be, but I'm sure it's going to be about, um, you know, do you think the state is doing enough for affordable housing or can you afford to live here anymore? I think something along those lines, because that's always the number one issue when you, when you ask. Well, actually, you, you know, in, in all my years of politics, and it depends, it depends. I think I, think, I agree with you right now. I think affordable housing cost of living. But in the past, uh, the, the, the issue that would challenge affordable housing as the leading reason for the rise in the cost of living was transportation. Oh, sure. You know, and having to drive in from uh, west side to, to uh, you know, go to work in, in, in the east side and vice versa. And, and it seems to me like, to a certain extent, the um, pandemic may have uh, lessened the yeah. impact of that issue. So, so okay, let's go down the line. All right, Josh is the guy to beat. Um, Sylvia Luke, real, real quick, I forgot to talk about her. I think Sylvia is one of these politicians who is better known in the legislature yeah. than in the public. And people don't realize uh, how smart she is, how how um, you know how strong she is, but uh, except in her district, but she shouldn't have any trouble raising money because one of the I don't you know it's one of these questions where you got to kind of raise from time to time, and I don't have the right answer, but an incumbent, powerful incumbent, always has the ability to raise more funds than any challenger coming into the race. And they can be raising them for years, like a lot of these folks have, and just build up these big war chests. So here we are. Okay, so we got uh, Josh Green is the guy to be. Uh, we got the Lieutenant Governors is still up in the up in the air. And the issues may be, uh, well, you know, the, Ben Caetano, myself, and Neil Abercrombie believe that we should build a, sta a stadium at the uh, the university and forget about doing a lot of again, but we'll see. And I get, I think you're right. I think it's either going to be the cost of living or, or the cost of housing. Yeah. Maybe any some last words. Any just... trends? You see any trends going on in this? Uh... You know, I don't see any trend, and 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 that's what I was interested in when I read the poll. I see a lot of data about present perceptions, but I, I really didn't see any underlying trends did you i didn't i mean these you know what's interesting is these for the the general issues this isn't so different from what we saw pre-pandemic i mean the polls that they took in 2019 you know i think Trend i think a lot of this is similar yeah 
Well, we are over. So I want to thank you, Colin, for coming on with me. And just, you know, every once in a while, uh, people like myself um, who are addicted to political things, you know, kind of like to have fun and, and just discuss it. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for indulging me. And it's always a pleasure to have you on uh, Top Story with John Whitehead. Thank you.